All right, this is Uncle Jam. We're back at it with another resource pack video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make custom skies. Now, as you can see, this is dramatic skies, which I did not create. I will link that pack down below in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. And as you can see, it really just makes the game much more immersive. Now, this is the custom sky. And as you can see, I have a little switch here, which will speed up the time cycle just for visual purposes so we can see the transitions of the sky. A couple things you want to notice here is the sky is actually rotating to the right and the sun is obviously rotating around that direction and we'll see as it comes into sunset here what it looks like and into the nighttime sky. So I'll be showing you how to create your very own custom sky in this video. So let's get into it. Alright, so just a reminder, this method does require Optifine in order to see, so make sure you have Optifine installed into your game in order to see these custom skies. Now there's a couple things you're going to need in order to create a custom sky. The first thing is you're going to need your image files, and then you're going to need some documents to tell the game how to implement these image files into the game. So let's start off with creating our image files. Now, if you check the description below, you'll see I have linked this template from the Optifine page. Let me open it up here. Now, as you can see, we have six boxes here, which correspond to different sections of the sky. Now, the sky is actually a box. And if you can imagine this folding into a box with the bottom top being on the top and these four wrapping around, that is what the sky looks like. So what I'll do is I'll throw this into the game and show you what I'm talking about. Alright, so here I am back in game. And as you can see, I have installed that skybox template directly into my game. So it allows you to see what I'm talking about. You can see the top, the all the sides, northeast, southwest, and the bottom there. So that's what the box looks like. So let's head back into Pixelmator and you can probably imagine how we're going to create our image. All right, so in order to create our image, we want to make sure that we set up all of the boxes to be connecting properly. As you can imagine, they all will connect with each other. So we want to make sure that it's all going to work. Now, I have to say, it, during this sky method, this step here is the most important part. You want to make sure your sky image is going to look really good. Now, I'm not the best artist and texture artist here. So I'm just going to create a quick demo sky over top of this that I will use as demonstration in the game. But this is going to be where you're going to want to spend most of your time if you're planning on creating a custom sky. Make sure that this sky box here looks really good and you really can't go wrong with all of the properties files and things like that at the end as long as this looks really good. So let me create my image. All right, so as you can see, I've created my image here. Now, I just did it very quick just for demonstration purposes, but as you can see, it all lines up properly if I fade in the template behind it there. You can see that all the boxes line up and it should form a decent looking sky. So make sure that you do this with your sky when you're creating it. Now, I'm going to export the document here. So we're going to head over to export. We're going to make sure it's a PNG file. And now we can name this anything we want. Just for simplicity purposes, I'm going to name it Sky1. Make sure there's no capitals or spaces in your name and we will export it to the desktop. Now, as you can see, I've created three skies. I got Sky1, which is our daytime sky. Sky2, which is going to be the dusk and dawn sky. And I got Sky 3, which is the night sky, which has stars everywhere except on the bottom. So when you're creating your skies, you can create as many skies as you want. However, I'm just sticking with three for now. Now let's install these into our resource pack. So we're going to head into our resource pack folder. If you don't know how to get here, check out episode one in my resource pack series. We're going to head into assets, into Minecraft. And now in here, we need a folder entitled MC Patcher. I already have one from previous tutorials. However, if you don't have one, just right click and create a new folder entitled MC Patcher. Let's head inside. Within here, we need a new folder entitled Sky. 
So create that, no capital or spaces. Within here, we need a new folder entitled world zero. And that's a zero, not an O. So world zero. That's gonna point to the overworld sky. Let's head inside. And now we will install our sky images right in here. Now we're halfway done. All we need to do now is work out all of our different properties files. So let's get into that. All right, so on Mac, I'm gonna use text edit to create our properties files. On Windows, you can use notepad. I'm gonna open a new document. We wanna make sure we make it a plain text format. And if you're on a Mac, head into preferences, open and save, change your encoding to Western Windows Latin one. And now we're gonna start off with the first optional parameter, which is source. Now this specifies which sky image file this properties file is going to relate to. So we're gonna put a dot and a slash, and what this says is it's gonna look for the image file relative to where we place this properties file. And because we're gonna place it in the same folder here as the image file, this will work out because the image will be in there. So put the dot and the slash to say relative to the properties file. And now we wanna specify which sky we want to point to. And in this case, I'm gonna do sky two dot PNG. Make sure you add the extension. And the reason I'm doing sky two is because this is the first sky I want to appear during the daylight cycle. Now you may wonder how you know what the daylight cycle is. Well, I'll pull another image onto the screen, which is from the Minecraft wiki, and it allows you to see the daylight cycle. And I'll link that down below if you wanna check that out. So you can see all the times of day in the Minecraft day related to a 24 hour clock that we can easily recognize. And this is gonna come in handy for our next required parameters. So we'll start off with start fade in. Now we wanna specify what time of day we want our sunset sky, which is sky two, to start fading in to the sky. So we need to pick a certain time. So I'm going to pick the time, we'll say around 4.50. And now we need to specify the end fade in. And this is gonna be when it's done fading in and it will be in full effect. And we will say it will be done fading in at around 5.30. And now you'll notice I have start fade out in brackets. That's because you do not need to include that in your document if you don't want to. The game will automatically calculate that value based on the other three values so you don't have to include that one. However, I just put it there to show you that it is there. So I'm gonna skip it and type end fade out. And this is gonna be when we want our sky to completely disappear. So I'm gonna put it to completely disappear at around 6.30. So there we go. So it's gonna come, start fading in at 4.50. It's gonna be done fading in by 5.30 and it will stay in full force all the way until 6.30 and then it will end fading out. So that's how we edit these sky documents. So let me save my document. Now, the important thing when saving your properties files is you have to call them sky and then a number. And the number is the order in which you want the skies to appear throughout the day. And since I want this sky to appear first, we put in sky one. And now we put dot properties. It has to be dot properties. And we need to change the encoding to Western Windows Latin one and make sure this bottom box is unchecked. We need it to be a dot properties file. So we'll hit save and we will install it into our folder. So what this will do is it will enable the sky two, which is my orange sky for the sunrise in the Minecraft world. And that's gonna be my first sky. So now I'm gonna need to create more properties files to tell the game when to implement all these different images. And they have to be in order in which I want them to appear. So my next properties file, which is gonna be sky two, is going to be the daylight sky because after sunrise we have daylight. So I'll create all the properties files for all the different images and then we'll check it out in game. All right, so I've created all my properties files. I will pop them open here and you can pause the video and take a look if you wanna see exactly what I did. 
just added in the specified times for all of the images there going throughout the day. So we start with uh, sunrise, daytime, sunset, and nighttime. So let's head in game and see how it looks. All right, so here I am in game. We can see it's daytime, it's about noon. And we have the sky, the blue sky showing. Now let me just edit my thing, 25. We'll flip the lever here and we'll watch the daylight cycle start going. Now what you may notice is the sky, the clouds are actually rotating with the sun. Now this is not what we want. And you'll also notice that the transition there was not very smooth and now we're into night. So we need to edit some optional parameters in order to fix all this rotation as well as some of these transition between the various skies. So let's head into the optional parameters. All right, so I'm back in my folder. I'm going to head into sky2.properties, which is going to touch on the daytime sky. So we can see that in game. Let's head inside and we'll check out the first optional parameter, which is weather. Now, I'm not going to go in depth into this one. However, it's pretty self-explanatory. It will apply the sky only during certain weather conditions. So it's looking for a value of clear, rain, or thunder. So you can specify clear and it will only show the sky in clear sky at the specified times. So that's the weather parameter if you have a special sky for rain or thunderstorms. Now the next parameter we have is rotate. Now we have three parameters, rotate, speed, and axis, and all three of these are linked to the rotate parameter. So rotate, is wondering whether it wants the sky to rotate. Now, if you remember what we just saw, the sky was rotating with the sun. Now, that is not what we want for the sky. We want the sky to stay put. So we could put false, and now nothing would rotate, and we don't have to include the speed or axis parameters. However, if we set the rotate to true, what we can do is change the axis so it will rotate around the player. So let me show you what I mean here. Now speed, the default value is one. So I'm just gonna set it to one. And speed is a pretty self-explanatory parameter. If you want it to spin faster, you speed it up. If you want it to spin slower, you slow it down. You it decrease the value. So once again, I won't go too in depth into that one as it is pretty self-explanatory. However, axis is a bit more complex. Axis is looking for three numbers. Zero, zero, and zero, if I can type it out there. So as you can see, we have three values of zero. Now the default rotation is one being on the third number. Now let me pull some images onto the screen and I will show you how you can select which axis of rotation you want your sky to rotate around. Now as you can see by those images, it will show you what all of the axes and which code to type into these three zero numbers. So as you can see, if I change it to having a one in the center, what this will do is it will rotate it around the vertical Y axis and this will make it look like it's spinning around the player rather than around the x-axis like the sun and moon, it will be spinning around the vertical axis so it will look like it's spinning around the player. So I'm gonna save that and as we can see, that is how we're gonna change the rotation. So it's a pretty self-explanatory parameter. You decide whether you want it, true or false. Then you decide the speed, the default value is one, you can speed it up or slow it down. And then you can decide the axis based on those numbers that are on the screen now. So that's the rotate parameter. Now let's talk about the blend parameter. All right, so blend is the blend mode which the sky will appear on top of the previous sky. So how it will transition. Now there are many options for the blend mode as you can see all the options on the screen and I will quickly show you what each of them will look like. Now, the add property, as you can see by the image on the screen there with the three circles, it basically adds the values, kind of like when you mix paint together. 
So it will add the color values and create a new color value based on adding up the previous two. Now the add method is actually the default method. So what we just saw in our quick little demo was the add method. Now let's move on to subtract. Now to show you these methods, I'm actually just gonna open up my image here with Pixelmator, my image editing software just to demonstrate these various transitions. So I'm gonna throw on my sunrise sky on top of the blue sky, and we're going to set the blend mode for the sunrise sky blending on top of this sky in the background. So let me show you what subtract will look like. I'm gonna select subtract here from my image editing software. And we can see, so this is what the daylight sky will look like. And coming in, if we had the subtract blend mode set, what's going to happen as it fades in is it will turn to this color. And then the regular sky will fade out and look like that. Now that is definitely interesting and maybe good for a nighttime sky or some type of moon or something like that. However, definitely not in this circumstance is that what I want. So let's check out the multiply. And as we can see, we'll watch it fade in again really quickly here. Fades in, turns kind of green, and fades out into that. That's what it will look like. And now let's do dodge. As we can see, there it is. It's going to fade in like so. And the background sky will fade out like so. So that doesn't look too bad. Let's check out burn. We can see it's going to fade in like so and fade out like so. So this is just a quick demonstration of what these will look like. So you can decide which one you want to use for your skies. Screen, let's try that one out. We'll see off, comes in, looks like that, and will come out like that. That's screen and replace. Now that one, I can't demonstrate here. Basically what it's gonna do is it's just gonna straight up replace the texture. It's just a very sudden change and it will just have this texture and then the next moment will be this texture. So it kind of removes all the fading in and fading out. It will just throw this texture right on at the beginning of the start fade in time. That's replace and overlay, I believe we have in here. Let's see what that looks like. There we go, that will fade in like so and fade out like so. That one looks pretty good. And then alpha, which is, I also cannot demonstrate here, but what it does is it weights the alpha values and takes an average and then will display your sky color. Now, if you wanna see exactly what that does, just type in alpha blending on Google and check out some images of what alpha blending will look like. So that's all the blending modes and that basically covers all of the optional parameters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set up all of my skies to try to make it as good as possible and I'll show you the result. All right, so I have adjusted all of my properties files to try to get a smooth look. However, my drawings at the beginning were not the best and so the look is always gonna look a little bit odd. However, as you can see, the transition is looking a lot smoother than before. And we can see the sun coming up and our orange sky start to fade in and the stars are still there just slowly fading out. So that's basically going to do it for this video. I hope that helped you guys out and gave you a bit of an overview on how to add in custom skies into your game. I hope that can help you out in doing so. And uh, stay tuned for more videos to come and have a good day.